Hi folks, I'm Mr. Fullerton and today I'd like to talk to you about one of the most important conservation laws in mechanics and that's the conservation of momentum. We'll begin by explaining the law of conservation of momentum and then we'll use the conservation of momentum to solve a variety of problems. Finally, we'll explain the difference between an elastic and an inelastic collision. Now, Momentum is conserved in an isolated system. That means if there are no external forces, no forces from outside some system acting upon it, the total momentum in that system is always going to be the same. This is very useful for analyzing systems of collisions and explosions. Now a collision occurs, that's an event in which two or more objects approach and interact strongly for a brief period of time. Its opposite, an explosion results when an object is broken up into two or more fragments. And the key to all of these, the conservation of momentum, says in a closed system when there are no external forces, the total momentum before any event is the same as the total momentum after the event. The initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. Now we can use a tool known as a momentum table to help us analyze systems of collisions and explosions. And a couple keys to using momentum tables is we're going to start by identifying all of the objects in the system. We'll list them vertically down the left-hand column. Then we'll determine the momenta of the objects before the event. And if there are any unknowns, we'll substitute a variable for them. Next, we'll find the momentum of the objects after the event. And again, if we don't know any of those, we'll substitute a variable for them. Finally, we'll add up all the momenta before the event and all the momenta after the event and we'll set them equal to each other. Once we do that, we can solve for any resulting unknowns. Let's see how this works in practice. If we have a 2,000 kilogram car traveling at 20 meters per second and it collides with a 1,000 kilogram car travel at rest at a stop sign. If the 2,000 kilogram car has a velocity of 6.67 meters per second after the collision, find the velocity of the 1,000 kilogram car after the collision. Well, we'll start with our momentum table. We'll make a list of our objects. We have car A, which will be the 2,000 kilogram car. Just label that A. B will be the 1,000 kilogram car. So we will have these objects in our momentum table. Let's find the momentum before the collision. So we'll call this P before in kilogram meters per second or units. And we'll also need to know the momentum after in kilogram meters per second. So we're starting to make our table. We'll need to know momentum before and after for each of our objects. And let's also add in a row for the total momentum before and after. Now, before the collision, we know car A is 2,000 kilograms traveling at 20 meters per second. So 2,000 times 20 gives it a momentum of 40,000 kilogram meters per second. Car B was at rest at the stop sign. If it has no velocity, it has no momentum. So its initial momentum, its momentum before the collision is zero. So the total momentum before the collision is 40,000 plus zero for a total of 40,000 kilogram meters per second. Now let's look after the collision. After the collision, we know car A has the same mass, 2,000 kilograms, but it's traveling at 6.67 meters per second for a total momentum after the collision of 13,340 kilogram meters per second. Car B has a mass of 1,000 kilogram meters per second, but we don't know its velocity after the collision. So let's call that the variable VB. So 1,000 kilograms times its velocity VB gives it a momentum after the collision of 1,000 VB. So when I add these up, the total momentum after the collision will be 13,340 kilogram meters per second plus 1,000 VB. Now we apply the law of conservation of momentum that says the total momentum before must equal the total momentum after. So there's our resulting equation. We can solve this for VB by subtracting 13,340 from both sides. 
minus 13,340 from both sides. And we should get 1,000 VB equal to, what is that, 26,660 kilogram meters per second. Divide both sides by 1,000. And I end up with the VB of about 26.7 meters per second. So the velocity of car B after the collision must have been 26.7 meters per second. Figured all this out just using the law of conservation of momentum. Let's take another example. On a snow-covered road, a car with a mass of 1.1 times 10 to the third kilograms collides head-on with the van having a mass of 2.5 times 10 to the third kilograms, traveling at 8 meters per second. Now realize if they're colliding, they're going in opposite directions, so the velocity of one of these must be negative with respect to the other. As a result of the collision, the vehicles lock together and immediately come to rest. Calculate the speed of the car immediately before the collision. All right, let's make our list of objects again. So we have objects, we have a car, we have a van, and let's make a row here for total. Now the momentum before in kilogram meters per second, and we'll have a row for momentum after in kilogram meters per second. Pardon me, a column for momentum after. Now, before the collision, the car has a mass of 1,100 kilograms, and we don't know its velocity, so we'll call this V car. So its total momentum before is 1,100. Oops, let me make that a little bit clearer. 1,100 V car. The van before the collision has a mass of 2,500, and its velocity must be opposite that of the car, so we'll call that negative 8 meters per second for a total momentum of negative 20,000 kilogram meters per second. So the total momentum of all of our objects before the collision must be 1,100 V car minus 20,000. Now, after the collision, it says the vehicles lock together, so they become one object and they come to rest, so their momentum is zero. So the total momentum after is zero. The law of conservation of momentum says these must be equal. So 1,000 V car minus 20,000 must equal zero. Let's solve this algebraic equation to find the velocity of the car. If we add 20,000 to both sides, I get the new resulting equation of 1,000 V car equals, pardon me, 1,100 V car. It's a slight error there. 1,100 V car equals 20,000. Therefore, V car must equal 20,000 over 1,100, which is going to be about 18.2 meters per second. So velocity of the car before the collision, 18.2 meters per second. Let's take a look at one more problem. This time we'll look at an explosion. We have a hunter with a 4 kilogram rifle firing a 20 gram shell with a velocity of 300 meters per second. Find the recoil velocity of the rifle. That means you have the rifle and bullet as a system before it's shot at rest. If the bullet is flying out one way, the rifle must go back the other direction. And that's the recoil velocity. So we'll do this the same way. We'll list our objects. Our objects. We have a rifle. We have a shell. And we'll make a row here for total. We also know that we'll have to look at the momentum before in kilogram meters per second. And we'll have to look at the momentum after in kilogram meters per second. 
All right, now before the collision, the rifle and shell are both still. They're basically one object. They have no momentum. Therefore, their initial momentum is zero, so the total momentum before the collision is zero. Now, after the event, they split up. The rifle, which has a mass of 4 kilograms, has some recoil velocity that we don't know. So its momentum after will be 4 times V recoil. The momentum of the shell has a mass of 0 0.020 kilograms, because it's 20 grams, and it has a velocity of 300 meters per second for a momentum of 6 kilogram meters per second. That gives us a total momentum after of 6 plus 4 V recoil. We apply the law of conservation of momentum, which says the total momentum before the collision must equal the total momentum after, or 0 equals 6 plus 4 V recoil. We'll subtract 6 from both sides and get negative 6 equal to 4 V recoil. If we divide both sides by 4, we find that V recoil equals negative 6 over 4, or negative 1.5 meters per second. So the rifle's recoil velocity is 1.5 meters per second, and it's negative because it's in the opposite direction of our shell. Now, types of collisions, and we've seen a couple of these. In an elastic collision, sometimes you can think of these as bouncy collisions, the two objects bounce apart. Now, physically, if you want to go prove an object is completely elastic, what you would say, find, is that the total kinetic energy of all the objects before the collision is equal to the total kinetic energy of all of the objects after the collision. That's not a law of physics. That's a definition. If the total kinetic energy before is equal to the total kinetic energy after, then it is a completely elastic collision. On the other hand, a completely inelastic collision is a sticky collision. The two objects hit each other, and they stick together. In effect, they become one object. So elastic collisions are bouncy collisions. Kinetic energy is conserved. Inelastic collisions are sticky collisions. The two objects stick together. Hopefully, this was helpful. A nice introduction to conservation of momentum. If you need more information, need more problems, looking for more help, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks for your time, and have a terrific day.